Here's the squeeze theorem in multivariable calculus. So the basic idea um, is, is very similar to single variable calculus. If you have some inequality, like say function g is less than or equal to function f, and function f is less than or equal to function h, um, and if you can establish that function g is approaching some value l as x is approaching a, um, and if you can also show that function h is approaching that same value l, then you're forced to conclude by virtue of f being in between that f must also be approaching l. Uh, so the same idea holds in, <clears throat> in multivariable calculus as well. And so the basic procedure is step one is you have to establish the inequality. Um, so <clears throat> usually in, in a typical homework question, um, they give you some function f. And they'll say, show that f approaches zero or whatever. Um, and so you have to figure out, usually on your own, you got to figure out some h, some function h and some function g where f is in between. Um, I'll show you some tricks in a, in a few minutes. Um, but then w once you've established that, um, using whatever means necessary to establish that, then you can show that that lower bound, the g is approaching the limit, whatever the limit is, and that h, the upper bound, is approaching the limit. And if, if you've shown that those two approach l, then you can conclude that the middle function f is approaching l at the same time. Okay, before I do an example, let's talk about uh, this. This is the most challenging part, is figuring out the inequality. And so um, here, here's a couple tricks to, to figure out those inequalities. So the first thing is um, anything involving trig, um, like, for example, um, sine and cosine. Well, you know, a basic fact of, of sine and cosine is they're always between negative one and positive one. And so if you have a sine or a cosine, uh, somewhere in your function, then that's usually a good starting point. Um, another good starting point is uh, look for proper fractions. And in the example I'll do today, um, you'll see uh, an example of this. So, uh, so you know, for example, a proper fraction means the top number is less than the bottom number. Proper fractions by, by their nature is always less than one. Um, and so, for example, if you have something, say, like x squared divided by x squared plus y squared, um, because everything's positive, then um, you know that this denominator must be, this denominator right here, the x squared plus y squared, must be greater than x squared, or equal in the case where y equals 0. Um, and so you can say that by virtue of this being a proper fraction, you can say this must be less than or equal to one. And for that matter, um, zero's on the other side because everything's being squared. Um, now, if it, if something's not being squared, you can't be so, um, you, you, you can't be so freewheeling with your inequalities. If you have, for example, x divided by say, x plus y squared. Um, okay, if for example, if x was like negative three and y is one, then you'd have negative three over negative three plus one squared is one, which is negative three over negative two is 1.5. So this is not necessarily less than one. So you just have to be careful um, if you don't have everything being squared or absolute valued or whatever, um, you just have to be careful. Uh, sometimes you can throw in absolute values under certain conditions and then, that, then you could say that would be less than one. Okay, so having said that, let's do an example. So this is from section 11 to this is question number 11. Um, we have the function xy divided by square root x, plus, x squared plus y squared. So notice I've got x squared and y squares in my denominator. So this the denominator is always positive, but the numerator can be negative. So I just have to be careful about that. Um, I want to show the limit as xy approaches zero zero of this function is equal to um, zero now in the homework first you have to figure out that this is equal to zero um, i'm not going to go over that in this lesson i just want to show you how to use the squeeze theorem and so assuming it's equal to zero show that th that it's uh that indeed it, that's the answer is zero 
And so, um, so the first thing is you have to figure out some inequality. And the trick here is, is look at, say, something like this. Um, that at least when x is positive, you can see this is a proper fraction right there. Um, but let's be careful because x could be negative. And so you, um, if you want to throw in absolute values, you can. There's a clever workaround for this. Um, and let, let me erase this here first. Uh, so the, 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 the workaround when, when you have, um, X's and Y's that could be negative, you, you can do this, call this F of X. And then, um, uh, what you can say is to, to prove this limit exists, it's sufficient to prove that the distance, um, from your function uh, to L, L being the limit, whatever it is, prove that the distance from the function to the value L where you think the limit is, is prove that equals zero. And that's, that's sufficient um, to show that the, that the limit uh, exists and equals to whatever, whatever it is. And so in this case, um, I can take the absolute value of X, Y, divided by x squared plus y squared square root minus zero. I can show, I guess I can use arrows here to show that it's it's approaching zero here, actually. Okay, so we, we can um, we can play around with this a little bit. Minusing zero doesn't change anything. Um, and I can say the absolute value of this expression would be equal to the absolute value of um, x times the absolute value of y over square root x squared plus y squared. The, the denominator is always positive. Um, and so this, this expression right here is equal to this expression right there. Um, and so it's enough to show that the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of this is equal to 0 right there so now now we just have absolute value so we don't have to worry about weird cases like i showed you earlier where um your fraction might not be less than one so so that that's that's just um a, a little workaround for that um so now here's what we can do is we can establish this proper fraction is always less than one and so i i can start off if you'd like you can say something like this if you want to be super official you can say um you can say that we know that x squared is always less than or equal to x squared plus y squared uh, because y, y squared is always positive. Um, take the square root of both sides and um, just to, to make sure that um, negatives aren't going to mess us up, absolute value, yeah, square root of x squared is absolute value of x less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. A square root um, and then I can divide both sides I get absolute value of X divided by square root X squared plus Y squared that must be less than or equal to 1 right there um, and and you can see that 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 X squared plus Y squared is going to be bigger than X squared and then when you take when you take the square root the, this denominator must be bigger than X and so it makes sense. We always have a proper fraction. And for that matter, since I've got absolute values, I can also say it's always uh, greater than or equal to zero as well. Okay, so there, there's my, my beginning inequality. Now I got to throw in a Y here because I've got a Y right there. So um, when you have an inequality, if you multiply by a positive number, then... Um, the, the inequalities don't switch sides or don't switch directions. So I'll multiply everything by absolute value of y. And then I get zero times absolute value of y is still zero. Multiply the middle by absolute value of y. I've got absolute value of x times absolute value of y divided by square root x squared plus y squared, which is then equal to one times absolute value of y is absolute value of y. Okay, and this is, this is the limit. This is like my... Um, this, this is like the, the F, 
right here. This is like the G and this is like the H and the sandwich theorem. And so back to, uh, I, I mentioned it's it's sufficient to show absolute value of X, absolute value of Y divided by square root. This right here, it's, a, it's sufficient to show that this limit is equal to zero to, sh to prove that the original problem over here is equal to zero. And so, um, uh, now I can I can invoke squeeze theorem. So I can say that the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of g, which is just 0. Okay, so so of course that's going to equal 0 because no matter what x and y are, 0 is always equal to 0. Um, and I can also show that this function h is approaching 0 because um, as x, y approaches 0, 0, of the function absolute value of y, well, that's always equal to zero because that's just by direct substitution, just replace y with a zero. Um, so because the 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 bounds of the function approach zero, then I, I must conclude that this function f approaches zero. So I can do, if you like the triple dots for therefore, so I can say therefore absolute value of x times absolute value of y divided by square roots x squared plus y squared, that must equal zero. Oh, I forgot the limit. Hold on here. Let's throw in the, the limit symbols here. Limit as x, y approaches zero, zero um, equals zero. And so since I, I showed you uh, from the beginning that it was sufficient to show the absolute values of x and y divided by the, the radicals x squared plus y squared, if that equals zero, then the original limit must equal zero as well because the distance from that function to zero is equal to zero and uh and that that proves that the answer is zero